make no mistake emotional abuse is about control some emotional abusers are very intentional deliberate highly aware of what they're doing and very skillful in manipulating you in order to control and dominate you while others are not so self-aware not really recognizing the harm they're doing to you from the perspective of the victim from your perspective uh, the abuser's intent matters less than the psychological harm they do to you whether the abuser is acting out of deep-seated insecurity or calculated cruelty the result to the victim is always the same disoriented confused emotionally drained and degrading constantly degrading quality of life sometimes emotional abuse is very hard to recognize because yeah really skilled abusers are very tricky and so you will feel crazy like you don't know whether what's happening is okay whether it's you whether it's them so i'm about to tell you all of the ways in which you could be experiencing emotional abuse what that feels like then i will tell you what behaviors to watch for in the other person and finally i will tell you what you can do to protect yourself so let's dive right in let's see do you feel constant fear of upsetting the other person you find yourself carefully picking out your words considering your actions so not to set them off you suppress your true thoughts and feelings because you fear their reaction you might be emotionally abused you constantly feel anxious sad or worthless after interacting with the person you feel drained um, you're putting in too much energy to maintain the other person's emotional states and to avoid conflict you often and increasingly doubt your own judgment and your own recollection your own memory especially if the person consistently dismisses your feelings and your thoughts what does that look like let's say you say oh i feel sad about blah 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 they will come around and they'll say something like there's nothing to be sad about or they'll say you don't look sad you look okay to me that's a form of dismissal they're saying that what they're seeing doesn't match what you are experiencing therefore it must not be true so that's dismissing your feelings so do you increasingly feel mm, less capable less attractive or less intelligent because the other person is constantly undermining and belittling your ideas your accomplishments do you feel discouraged or even prevented from seeing friends and family and do you feel guilty when you're having a good time while you're out there with friends and family afraid that when you get home you will get the cold shoulder and the other person perhaps will be jealous that you had a good time so you feel like you're you're not deserving of having a good time if they're staying at home or if they're not equally enjoying themselves something like that do you feel the need to constantly apologize even for things that are not your fault because well they keep telling you everything is always your fault um so you feel like you're the klutz uh, you're constantly ruining everything um you're afraid to speak up you're afraid to enjoy yourself do you live in an emotional roller coaster one moment you feel loved and cared for and the other one the other moment you feel neglected and rejected um, do you feel like it's your job 
to keep them emotionally stable and to provide for their happiness. And I don't mean that in just like a normal human to human caring interaction, but you actually 100% responsible for their happiness. It's like your full time job. And then you feel guilty when they're not happy. Do you always prioritize their feelings over yours, their needs over yours? But you hardly ever get any appreciation for it either, no matter how much you try to cater to them. Um, do you feel like you can never do anything right and you're constantly trying your best? But your best is never good enough. So there will always be some nitpicking, some criticizing, some put downs. So do you feel small and inadequate? Do you always feel like you're obligated to constantly express your appreciation and gratitude towards them? At the same time, do you feel conflicted about um, how much you really need them in your life? Like... Part of you thinks that without them, no one else will ever look at you or take care of you. So you feel dependent on them. Do you feel and think that if you are to leave them or demand space for yourself, they will somehow retaliate against you, maybe harm themselves or harm you or both. So you feel stuck kind of a feeling. If this sounds familiar, here's why. Listen up. This is what emotional abusers do to make you feel all these things. Pay attention so you can recognize the behavior next time and not beat yourself up because it's not you. It's them. You're being manipulated. You're being targeted. Again, whether deliberately or the person is just acting out their learned behaviors. Do me a favor though, like this video and subscribe to the channel to help me grow the channel and to help YouTube know that this is a good content to send it off to other people so they can get some help. Okay, let's go over several common behaviors of emotional abusers. Remember... They don't have to be intentional or deliberate or conscious. They're still harmful. But if they're doing these things to you intentionally and deliberately, calculating it, that's extra evil. There's no excuse for that person. You can't make excuses for them because you probably do. If you're in an emotionally abusive relationship, you probably make excuses for your emotional abuser. I've seen and heard everything like, oh, you know, um, they, their temper is just short because they work so hard to provide for the family and I need to be more patient with them. They make all kinds of excuses or it's like, Oh, you know, they had so many bad things happen to them. I just need to tolerate them more. Baloney. Don't make any excuses. So pay attention. The abuser frequently, frequently belittles or puts you down. Often disguised as a sarcastic joke. And so you kind of get confused. It's like, are they putting me down or are they just thinking this is funny? And that's part of the game. The confusion is part of the game. Sometimes they're disguising it under, you know, constructive criticism. I'm just trying to help you out is what they're going to say. But like every single thing, they don't give you any credit. It's not constructive criticism. That's just putting you down and keeping you there. They constantly criticize you anything from what you wear your choices for whatever you want like you name it they'll criticize it your ideas just everything they gaslight you the abuser makes you question your reality that's the very definition of gaslighting for example they may deny events or conversations from ever happening 
and he'll be like but this did happen on this day at this time we had this conversation they'll be looking at you like you're crazy you must have dreamed that up this never happened making you doubt your own perception your own memories twist them that's even more sinister is when they take something that you remember and they kind of twist it a little bit to make it sound like completely different or portray it in a different light and often that happens around things where they could actually shift blame onto you for anything they might have done like they might say things like you're too sensitive to invalidate your feelings and perceptions or like I said, mm, that never happened. You're imagining things. Um, or they'll say, no, 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 no. That's not how it happened. Then that's when they alter the details of the events to show them in a different light and to erode your own memory. The abuser tries to control your actions. So that's why you probably feel sometimes restricted in what you can do. This could include control, um, controlling who you see, what your job is, like what you can do for a living. Try to coerce you to do things that you may not want to do. And they'll say things like, um, if you really loved me, you would X, Y, and Z. Or they'll say, well, you must not care deeply enough about me because if you did you would blah 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 and they'll insert the action that they want you to take and make it sound like if you don't then you're just not a good person or you're not a good partner um, and sometimes they can be even less obvious and more covert in how they manipulate you they'll start the process well ahead of time where they will slowly over time create a certain perception in you and that will necessitate whatever action they want you to take so for example they don't want you to see your best friend but they can't just come up to you and say i never want you to go hang out with your best friend because they know it's going to be a fight so what they'll do is over time they will start degrading your best friend's character and try to find faults in them and try to invent stories, critical things. Ooh, there's a yellow jacket. <laughs> and after, after a while, your perception of your best friend changes and when they finally say, well, what the hell, why are you spending any time with them? You go, you know, you're right. And then you stop seeing your best friend. And so this process might take you know weeks months sometimes but they'll get there and like i said the ones that are more deliberate sinister calculating they know how to do these manipulations so they're not so obvious they may so they will intentionally isolate you from your support network your friends your family whatever wherever you go to feel good on your own they will try to sabotage that they want you to feel like they're the only thing in your life that matters so that you're fully dependent on them and you can't stand on your own two feet. They want you to be at a point where you're afraid to leave because you believe that you can't survive or function on your own. So you're totally dependent. Uh, but at the same time, they never take responsibility for their actions yes they blame you but they also blame external circumstances and other people for example they might say things like if you hadn't done x i wouldn't have done y in other words they condition their actions on your actions like if you didn't do this <laughs> If you didn't upset me, I didn't have to, I wouldn't have beaten you up. Extreme example. If you didn't open your big mouth, I wouldn't have slapped you. That kind of thing. The abuser may refuse to communicate, give you gives you the silent treatment. Uh, we call that stonewalling. 
they withhold affection, some of them withhold sex, some of them withhold other resources, financial resources, whatever, anything to either punish you or to coerce you. They will alternate between giving you attention and affection and being cold. And that creates an emotional roller coaster. So you one moment you feel neglected, the other one you feel appreciated and, and you just don't know what it is and it makes you it solidifies within you the idea that it must be you because look, they they can be nice to you. So when they're not nice to you, it must be your fault. Um, so you feel like you constantly have to earn their affection. You have to work extra hard to keep them happy and to earn their attention and love. Um, so the abuser chips away at your confidence by making you feel worthless, incompetent, um, they will be excessively jealous, accusing you of um, liking others more than you like them, uh, cheating or all kinds of ways, anything that they feel threatening to themselves. Maybe it's your job because you get a lot of attention appreciation you're rising in your career so you're getting more successful they feel threatened that maybe you'll get so successful you leave them so they'll try to hold you back and one of the ways they'll do that is by um uh, telling you that you must care about your job more than you care about them try to make you feel guilty um some of them are so controlling actually that they go as far as literally wanting to know what you're doing and where you are every minute so i've had clients talk about their partners tracking them on their iphones so i don't have an iphone i have a samsung but the feature on iphone where you can connect your phones so the other person is literally watching on the map where you are at all times and then the questioning so you went to lunch at this restaurant did you go alone or at five o'clock you were supposed to be at this location but you were at that location where the hell were you and you know life happens in all kinds of ways you don't have to be doing anything shady to not be at the exact place at the exact time they expect you to be so it causes a lot of conflict. But the fact that you're literally on a leash is a warning sign. They want you, they want to see what's on your social media. They want access to your emails, to your phone. This is not okay. There's no reason for anybody to be keeping tabs on your deeply personal stuff. And if they are, that is not okay. When you try to retaliate, um, try to stand up for yourself, or you tell them that you leave them, they will accuse you of not loving them. They will tell you things like, I'm if you leave me, I'm going to hurt myself, or if you leave me, I will find you. You will never have a peaceful day in your life. So they will, they will use multiple techniques. A, they will threaten their own well-being so that you feel guilty and stay or b they'll try to threaten you from leaving because you're afraid for your life and safety they might say things like you've ruined my life i've done so much for you and here you are you're just gonna leave and all that stuff so no matter how and when you try to leave expect them to retaliate and expect it to be ugly unless unless they have found somebody else already and they don't really want you around anymore so when you say you're leaving they'll say good riddance and if that happens they definitely have something else someone else <laughs> something is going on because otherwise they don't just roll over if you find yourself in a relationship with one of these people first first and foremost don't blame yourself for getting in one they probably started out as a normal person and maybe they were even nice and love bombing you it's hard to know a person until you've been with them for a long time 
for a while and you've seen all their patterns you've still seen how they react from when this happens then that happens so don't blame yourself for not seeing it and and falling for them you can fall for and especially the very manipulative ones they will make you fall for them pretty easily it's not going to get better this type of person doesn't change unless for some reason they are able to acknowledge their ways and make a concerted effort um, to like go to therapy and work on themselves but if they're the kind of person that resorts to um, manipulation to control you they're not interested in changing they're interested in changing everyone and everything around them to conform to what they want um, so most likely they will continue to blame you for the problems in the relationship uh, they might pretend um, they're trying to get help. They might go through a short phase of being on their best behavior. But trust me, this will come back. So if you can leave, do leave. Um, uh, if you can't leave immediately because, you know, logistics, kids, jobs, houses, I don't know, people's lives are complicated. Your number one defense is setting firm boundaries i keep recommending setting boundaries for everybody <laughs> in all my videos um it really simplifies life when you lay down the rules and say i will not tolerate this 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 type of behavior and then you stick to to that the moment you um, allow the other person to roll over a boundary is the moment the boundary no longer exists. If you tell them, when you yell at me, I will remove myself from the conversation for 30 minutes to allow us to calm down. It's not because I'm abandoning the conversation. It's because I want us to calm down and, and get back to the conversation with a clear mind. But every time you yell at me, I will remove myself physically from the conversation from the room for 30 minutes. Then they yell at you and you don't remove yourself. Forget it. You can never reestablish that boundary again. But if you do remove yourself 30 minutes, they will be pissed at you the first time. They'll slam the door, yell after you. You just ignore that. You're gone for 30 minutes. You come back. 30 minutes, you try again the conversation, see how it goes, and it becomes a conditioning. Sooner or later, they learn that, yeah, you're sticking to your guns. And that will prevent a lot of unnecessary drama if you set your boundaries and if you keep them. Seek support from a therapist, a support group, trusted friends, trusted family. You need people who can help you a vent so you can digest the emotional load you'll get perspective their perspective you'll get some education like if you're going to a therapist they'll help you work through whatever makes you a vulnerable candidate to be in a relationship with somebody like this and then they'll help you with tools how to handle the other person and how to take care of yourself so at least for a while, you can manage the situation with a person like that without allowing them to destroy you psychologically. At the same time, document the abuse both so that when they tell you that something didn't happen, you can go look and see, yeah, yeah, that happened. You said this and blah, blah, blah. So that helps you keep your memory straight so they can't gaslight you. But also in the event that things escalate and you know you have to seek law enforcement or file a temporary restraining order or something you have evidence to support your claim for that need and it also helps you make your case to friends and family because chances are that person has left a completely different impression on your friends and family so when you go to them with your troubles they usually go i don't know what you're talking about this person sounds pretty nice or whatever 
but if you go look on this what happened this what happened like you actually have it documented it has a lot more weight think about your future take time to reflect on what you want from the relationship and whether it's possible for things to change but again remember emotional abuse is about control and there is a reason why the person needs to be in control and so sometimes that is the insecurity um you know you can try to have some conversations always approach the situation with a positive um with hoping for the best but if you're trying the best you can doing the most intelligent things you can do and they're not showing signs of progress uh, in fact things may be escalating then you should really be considering other options if you have them um, again it's a little tricky because if you think that you can't live without this person or function without this person you probably don't see other options but if you do take st steps to care for yourself and educate yourself you might reach a different state of mind where you see that you are resourceful you do have what it takes you do have support and you might see leaving as an option yeah unfortunately sometimes leaving might be the healthiest option um if the com abuser continues or worsens this might be necessary so in those cases you should have a backup plan you should have a safe place you should have your own resources support system um that if necessary you can skip on a moment's notice okay like this video to let me know if you learned something if you enjoyed the content please subscribe if you know someone who needs to hear this definitely share this video with them so they can be helped as well thank you for watching be well see you in the next one